Awesome. Everybody's here. We've got on the line um, Francesco Tanguara, and uh, he's a construction engineering technician at Algonquin College. So he's joining us in uh, Ottawa today. And we also have two STEM camps joining us. We have Brantford and Paris. So hello to everyone. And thank you so much, Francesco, for joining us today to answer some questions about engineering. Um, we also have hello, other camps joining. Um, they'll be watching this live stream and submitting questions via Twitter. So I'll get to those. Um, a little bit later. Uh, as everybody probably knows, today is roller coaster day. So the campers will be building trust bridges, tornado towers, and of course, a roller coaster. Um, they'll be learning about the engineering concept of the truss, weight capacity, center of gravity, and uh, when it comes to roller coasters, learning about potential energy, kinetic energy, and momentum. Um, so the campers, I'm sure, have all sorts of questions to ask you um, that will help uh, with building and designing these um, projects. But first, Francesco, can you tell us a bit more about what you do as a construction uh, at Algonquin College? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, can you see and hear me fine? Can everyone hear Francesco okay? It's frozen, but I can't hear. Okay, um, so Francesco is going to introduce himself to us. If everyone could just um, hold off on being a little bit hard, we do this. Be like, oh, whatever. Is it can I click or click? Uh, I'll just go ahead to end. Yep, okay, everyone, ready to introduce Just go ahead. Everyone should okay. settle down. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Francesco. I'm a professor at Algonquin College, and my background is in structural engineering. So I practiced as a structural engineer, specifically as a forensic engineer for a number of years before I became a professor. Basically, right, guys, what I did before become a professor. We'll be here in one second. Oh, who is somebody yeah, having to do this first? Okay. Okay, sorry. Continue, Francesca. Okay, so what I did basically is I investigated failures like collapses in houses, explosion, houses that have exploded or barns that have fallen, cars that have driven through homes. It was my job to investigate these kind of failures in homes, including bridges, barns, and the like. And then I decided to move on to do some teaching, and that's what I'm doing right now as a professor at Algonquin College. Okay. Great. Okay. Is somebody having technical difficulties? Maybe just so we can um, spare the background noise. If everyone on the call, unless you're being called on for a question, could put yourself on mute. That might help.
to your home. It's the little about, things uh, matter. That's why we'll get you all the benefits you're entitled to with TD Insurance Home Protection. And then, um, I'm just not Alex sure <laughs> what's going on. Alex if everybody, That's okay, but if you could put your mic on mute, that would help. Oh, the background noise. Oh, good. <laughs> well, if that happens, we can. Okay. Well, thank you, Francesco, for that introduction um, into what you do as a construction engineer. It sounds like very interesting work. Uh, being a bit of a detective after something goes wrong. Um, I guess we'll get okay. started in the question, um, question and answer session. I'll go to Brantford for the first question. Does Brantford have a question home, ready? The little things matter. That's why we'll get you all the benefits you're entitled to with TD Insurance Home. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Would you mind repeating the question, please? I'm getting, it sounds like a feedback loop uh, with a, a number of. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out which camp that is. That's audio only. I think that they have the live stream playing, and we're getting a feedback and hearing a delay in our call. I'm getting, it sounds like a feedback loop with a number of. I'm just trying to figure out which camp that is. That's audio only. I think that they have the live stream playing. and sit at a table where there's not Now we will eat our, our snack 
for 15 minutes and then we will during that time we'll try to get the video if you have any questions about bridges ask alex and she'll write them on the twitter account and then we'll get back to the seniors we'll get back to their um bridge speaking. okay you can go and get your lunch now So Anne, I don't know if you can't hear me, but I can't hear you. I can't hear you, no. I was uh, hearing fine someone else uh, giving directions for lunch, but now I hear nothing. Can you hear us? Uh, somebody just spoke and I can hear you. That is Brantford speaking. Okay. Paris is here too. Hi, Brantford and Paris. So can Brantford ask their question now? Yes. Okay. Brantford, go ahead and ask your question. When you come out of a loop to loop or a corkscrew on a roller coaster, why sometimes why can't you move afterwards for a few seconds? Ah, there could be a couple of reasons for that. Have you tried going on one of those yourself? Yes. Yeah. So, and they can be sort of fun too, but there's a couple of things that happen when you go on something like that. One of them is it plays around with your inner ear and it gets you kind of uh, disoriented, like uh, your head is a little light. Two, it also makes a point of driving all the blood away from your mass, from your body, towards your extremities, like your fingers, the tip of your nose, the tip of your ears. So for a little while, you're actually lightheaded because the blood has gone in the wrong direction. So it's gone away from the important stuff, it's gone towards the extremities. So that's a couple of the reasons why you would feel that way if you went on something like that. Do you enjoy going on loop-de-loops or corkscrews? Uh, yes. Yeah, me too. They're some of my favorite ones. <laughs> a, a quick question, uh, Branford. Can you see me right now? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah, you. Fantastic. Do you have another question in Brantford? Uh, yes, we do have another question. How do roller coasters work? Ah, okay. I'll show you with a simple example if that's okay with you. Uh, and just a quick note, Anne, no, I can't hear you. All right, so can you see this ball in Brantford? Yeah. Yes. Fantastic, okay, fantastic. I'm just gonna show you, right now, I'm about to... Oh, we can't hear you anymore. No, we can't hear anything. Oh, no. Oh, I can hear Anne now. Okay. Can't hear. Uh... I think Branford cannot hear me now. Oh, now we can hear you. Oh, okay, I'm back. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so did you see that ball drop in Branford? Yes. Okay, so that's really how a roller coaster works. It starts off with some force bringing up the weight, like in this case, you guys in your seats. And then once it gets very, very high up, it pushes you over the edge and it lets go and gravity pulls you back down. And that's what allows you, believe it or not, to do all the loop-de-loops, the corkscrews, going up further hills again. It's that very, very, very tall hill at the beginning that gives you that initial push. 
Can I ask a question to you, Bradford? Can you think of something where you push yourself to go up higher and higher, and then it's a lot of fun? You find this in parks. Do you guys know what he's talking about? Do you want to say it again, Neil? I, I heard it. That's right. That's exactly another example of, uh, believe it or not, how roller coasters work. You push yourself up with a swing, and then gravity brings you back down. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, and I'm glad we can all hear each other now. Um, let's go to our other live participant, Paris. What were your questions for Francesco today? Does anybody have any questions? Me. What's your question, Ben? Uh, what? 10 plus 20. <laughs> Uh, I think it's 50. Is that the right answer? Uh, I think so. Grace, you have questions? No. no? Nobody has any questions? No In questions Paris, if you want, can I ask you a question? Yep. Sure. Okay. So do you see what I have here with me? Maybe I'll just put it against my shirt so you can kind of see it. Do you see what I have here with me? No, we can't. Okay. So what I was just holding for the camera was actually spaghetti. And uh, believe it or not, this is the kind of type of structure that is used to make roller coaster. It's thin, slender, long pieces of spaghetti. The only thing is, instead of pasta, it's made out of steel or wood. Is everything okay, Paris? Yep. Okay. Hey, you gotta I've, I've been on the wooden roller coasters and they seem much creaky, creakier and more scary than the metal ones. <laughs> I think I <laughs> But that's okay. A bit. Yeah. And, and that's because um, wood is a live material. Oh. Um, a live so material? Right, it comes from something that is alive and it tends to expand and contract as the sun beats on it during the day and then it leaves and it cools down. That's why, if you might not know this actually, for maintenance of wood roller coaster, you actually have to water them during the day and then at night you have to go around and torque all the bolts on it. Oh, so much more maintenance for the wooden roller coasters. That's correct. That's interesting. I didn't know that. But it's good to know that they are actually being maintained, even though they're creaky. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we'll, I'll go to some questions from um, Twitter, the camps that are joining us on the live stream. Um, here's one from Dundas. Shout out to Dundas watching the live stream. Um, they want to know if you've been involved in making some roller coasters. Have you made a roller coaster or been involved in some way the development of a roller coaster? No, I admit not specifically as a professional. I did a little bit in school while I was doing some projects for school. But no, I, I, I yeah. Background noise is still um, coming through. Okay. Um, another question from Twitter from Ingersoll. Hello, Ingersoll today. Um, they want to know how come we don't fall out of roller coasters when it goes straight down or through it. I'm going to repeat that question back. The little things matter. That's why we'll get you all the benefits you're entitled to with TV insurance. Home. Sorry. Um, sure. Okay. It seems to have stopped. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll just repeat myself again. Brentford and Paris, if you are not on mute, just put yourselves on mute. We'll see if that helps. Okay, Francesco. The question was, how come we don't fall out of roller coasters uh, when they go straight down or through a loop? 
and that was from Ingersoll. Okay, so there are a couple of reasons why that happens. Uh, one of them is it depends on the speed and the angle at which the roller coaster is going down. If it's adequate enough that you don't go airborne, you stay in your seats. Uh, but believe it or not, actually, part of the thrill of going in a roller coaster is for you to actually try to fall out of your seats. That's why you're fitted with those braces across your body. And that's what your tummy feels actually when you're going down a roller coaster is you trying to come out of your seat. So one of the things that keeps you in your seat is your weight and the harness that's around your body. The other one too, especially in a corkscrew or a loop-de-loop, -loop, is actually the roller coaster itself. The acceleration in it, it basically wants to keep you inside against the track. So believe it or not, it's a mixture of trying to push you out of the seat, which gets you excited, and actually trying to keep you in the seat, which is a safe thing to do so that you can ride it again. Oh, cool. So this is another question that sort of, it might be related, but another question from Dundas. They want to know, once passengers go down the first drop, how do they maintain um, the speed for the entire ride? Okay, so engineers have actually worked out exactly how high the drop has to be so that first drop is sufficient to maintain that speed. So the same way, by me lifting this ball, I'm giving potential energy to this ball. It's stored in the ball so that when I let go, it falls down. It's the same for a roller coaster. But you'll notice, if you've been on a whole bunch of roller coasters, sometimes the track will pick you up again going uphill further down the roller coaster if that first big hill wasn't enough. Okay? But usually the first hill has been made on purpose so that it's more than enough to get you through the whole roller coaster. Cool. So related to that, I'll go back to Ingersoll. So would there be a limit on the height of a roller coaster? And if so, why? So I'll give you the short answer, and then I'll give you a slightly longer answer. The short answer is no. There isn't really a limit on how high you can make that first hill on the roller coaster. However, you'll have noticed that some roller coasters are not hundreds and hundreds of meters high. I think the tallest one is about 150 meters. And that's for two reasons. The higher you go up to start, the more expensive that roller coaster gets, right? Because it's flimsy. It's essentially made out of metal spaghetti. And the higher it goes, the more wind will blow it around because okay, it's very flexible. So the higher it goes, the stronger you have to make it, and the more expensive it gets. But the reality is, if you had an infinite budget, that is an infinite amount of money, you can make it as high as you wanted. Cool, so campers, you can go as high as you want with your roller coaster. Anything is possible. <laughs> um, we're coming to uh, near the end of our time today, but I'll close with one more question from Twitter that just came in from Waterdown. Hello, Waterdown today. Um, the roller coasters that they'll be making um, are basically marble tracks. So they'll have a marble going down a track, and they want to know um, what might be the fastest marble track possible. If you have any tips on uh, how to make the marble track as fast as possible. All right, but it's going to. One of the things though about making a very fast track, it means that it also has to be boring. So the fastest track is the one that goes up and then straight down and it doesn't curve or do a loop-de-loop -loop or do a corkscrew. That's gonna be the fastest track. That's because every time you put a corkscrew or a loop-de-loop -loop or even a curve, your marble will lose speed and energy. But you know, if you've been on a roller coaster, that that's what makes it exciting if you go through a loop-de-loop, -loop, a corkscrew, and so on. So in reality is, you might not be able to get the fastest one if you want to make it a little bit exciting, too. Okay, that's some good advice for uh, building the roller coasters today. Um, I'd like to thank you once again, Francesco, for taking the time to join us today um, and all of our STEM camps across Ontario. Um, so if the STEM campers want to take themselves off mute, we can all thank Francesco together. Uh, go 
on for the day. Thank you very much. And one other thing too, Anne, if there are more yeah. questions, feel free to email them to me and I'll reply okay. to them and then they can be redistributed back to the campers. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you very much. So um, if, if everyone heard that, if you have questions um, today about building your trust towers or anything, or roller coasters, you can email them to me and I'll forward them on to Francesco and uh, get an answer for you today as well. Thank you very much, Anne. And everybody okay, at the camps. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.